All right, morning, y'all. It is 6 a.m. and I'm on the road to go pick up a couple people and we'll head over to the Revive Gym and Raw headquarters. So I'll take you along and uh, see what today has in store. I've been up since like five just to make sure I got everything together, get my morning routine in, my non-negotiables. We uh, packed a cooler and have some frozen water bottles and some frozen Gatorade bottles instead of ice. And I have some mills packed in there. I got three mills, uh, two carbs, uh, and then one protein and veg mill, so like a lower carb mill. Um, Cause I don't know what we're doing as far as eating out. So I'd rather be prepared and bring something with me. And I can always buy ice later on at like a grocery store or something. But um, it's like a two and a half hour drive from Lakeland, three hour drive from Tampa. So we'll see when we see it there. Check out some cool stuff. Hopefully get to see some cool uh, athletes and owners of business for Raw and Revive. So let's see what today has in store. All right, guys. Uh, the three, no, the three of us? This is, um, well, this is a video, but I'm here, we're at the Raw. We're at Raw Revive headquarters. Yeah, man. No secret stuff in here, just product. It's freaking big, but um, so far I've been treated well. Good family oriented business and Brooks is showing us all the cool stuff that they have. So awesome. Look at all this. Freaking awesome, eh? We're all revive. So All right, so at the Revive Gym, hitting legs, I did hand of strength. And now we're about to go over to this, look at that, we got the Rogers. We're gonna go to this bad boy, check it out, see what's up. And then um, we go on to the next set, but so far so good. And um, yeah, we'll probably film some Film some of these sets. Oh, yeah, let's go, let's go. <laughs> the old pendulum squat. Don't be fooled by the one plate. One plate is two plates, three plates. So we'll go up to maybe three. See what happens. All right, so the vibe gym accomplished. Legs destroyed, no vomiting, no diarrhea, or pee in my pants. So good to go. So now the fun happens with food. And TJ just destroyed the Pacific Ocean. Sick of being small. Brooks, got that. Got this. Enough. He's making decisions. He's trying new stuff. But um, post-workout, carbs, protein, minimal fat. Got the pineapple for you, babe. This is for you. All right, it's the next morning. Yesterday was the Raw Headquarters and the Rabat Gym. Um, awesome time. Uh, great host over there as well. Um, and uh, had his killer workout on a pendulum squat and the... Um, there's just a lot of different Cybex machines that are really good. Um, not too far of a drive for me, as far as from uh, Riverview, it's like maybe you know, three hours taking the back roads. Um, so, but my legs are a little sore from yesterday with the uh, movements from like the pendulum squat and the Cybex, the way that it was set up is a little bit different, which is a good thing and uh, really enjoyable so 
the those are two pieces of equipment that I'm trying to find uh, to have myself. So right now I'm getting ready to go do some morning fasted cardio, and then also get a good little um, pump in, and uh, <clears throat> we'll just work out again the right side because the left side still very tender. Anyways. Uh, we got the raw pump, so the glycerol, the scoop of that. We have their more comprehensive formula of raw pump, It'd be like a raspberry lemonade flavor. Uh, this one will still give you some uh, nitrates, but not we're going to have the glycerol in there, which is great. So, uh, and then we'll partner it up with the Babbage, and this one does have a little bit of. Um, uh, nitrates in there, some aglutine sulfate, your citrulline of course would be the main driver, and the um, betaine and hydrous. So, got those for the pump added in there, 250 milligrams of caffeine uh, from caffeine and hydrous. And we will also do intro workout. We have their intro. We have the EAAs. So we've got a pineapple, we'll blend that up with the carbs. Uh, it's going to be a good idea if you um, want to do fasted cardio and then go into a training session. I think it's, from my experience, it's more beneficial to do it fasted if you prefer the fasted cardio. And then like towards the end of your fasted cardio, or like at the last part of it, start drinking your EAAs and your intra carbs. So that way you can kind of get that replenishment uh, of like electrolytes, water into the cells. Hopefully, you know, depending on everyone's, that person's metabolism, how many carbohydrates will be utilized uh, for the workout. And uh, that should be getting, getting into your bloodstream at the beginning of the workout. So you still get the benefits from fasted cardio, whether that be the dopamine response, whether that be a um, GI clearing response. That's a lot of the reason why some people do that cognitive function, um, or they were very carb depleted the day before, and then they're waking up in the morning, and there's just a way to kind of continue that fat burning process, trying to release some of those fatty acids from the fat cells. So, um, but again, if you don't have like an intra carb, you're going to suffer later on with your workout because you will start to go flat. You're not going to retain water. You'll lose your pump. And so I'd rather have the intro workout um, if you're waking up in the morning and you don't feel like eating. So a little tip for you, but the, the raw intro is really good. Uh, and then the NutriBio Super Carb is good. Uh, they have one that's like called Leg Day. I mean, there's quite a few out there. Demo day that I use. Um, but you can choose. It's not going to be goopy uh, like how Carbolin is or Vitargo. If you ever used this in the past. And it's also not going to be like drinking like rice powder. So um, we'll get this going and get the rest of my morning non-negotiables done. And you got the raw ready um but we will wear that because uh, it was a good gift from uh, brooks over at raw so awesome time again thank you guys but we'll be back and we'll see what what the rest of the day has planned it's pretty sunny here in florida and that means that i could probably get a good uh, car washing. So driving down those back roads to get to the Revive gym, it uh, destroyed my car with bugs. So we'll get that going later. All right, so we'll end the video here. Just um, got home from the gym, washed the car, did some laundry, ate um, ate some meat and uh, drank a shake and had a little bit of like fruit, right? So cantaloupe, banana, and blueberries, right? Game that's going on right now. I'm not really into like 
football anymore or like really professional sports, it's too hard to like follow them nowadays. I, whenever I was younger and I played like Madden and some like video games, I was more into it, but that's because you kind of have like a video game player relationship with that uh, team or those, those individuals. But um, the last person that uh, I followed and, and I actually got to meet was um, Brian Erlacher uh, back when I was in high school. And that's probably the last time that like that era of players, like that's whenever I stopped really paying attention to NFL because it's become so political now. But, um, but I don't mind watching the games because, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's kind of crazy how um, – you you look at the college athletes and especially being in college you're like okay like these are like like average you know they're pretty big guys or whatever but then you start watching um the nfl and you see the size discrepancies of how much larger these nfl guys are but yet some of them are fast as or even faster than the college kids uh, and so to me it's really cool having the physiology and kinesiology background uh, because some some classes we were able to study forces and uh, how it can be generated and then uh, put in a specific uh, direction, right? And what type of force that that would cause that person if they were, let's say, not moving or if they were moving in the opposite direction. Uh, so it's it's pretty cool. Um, but uh, yeah, so really don't care who wins. Um, I just like the big hits and um yeah that's to me that just seems really cool <laughs> so uh for all of you people that like uh that say like you know tampa bay buccaneers when they play over here there's like diehard fans and they're like well we beat y'all or we went to the super bowl like it, it, you're not part of the team so I understand the like collegiate styles where like that's your school. So like at UF, like we won versus Georgia, right? Or whatever. So I don't mind that. If you go to the school, if you don't go to the school and you didn't go to the school, probably shouldn't be saying that same idea with the team of the NFLs or any type of professional sports. There really is no we involved in this. You might feel like that, but unless you're part of the team, so it, it, uh, it, that's what kind of like deters me from actually following the like, um, professional leagues because people get so invested into it, man. They get invested in something that's you know, not going to be beneficial unless you, unless you, uh, bet on DraftKings. I guess you can win some money. So anyways, and finally, after like 29 days, the Vivo Barefoot, so this is like a teal color, and these are zero drop, but lightweight, recycled. These are size 12 for my feet, but um, I am I'm trying to follow some advice from Mark Bell, and I am trying to get more uh, uh, grounded. So I'm trying to get my feet to where I can spread them or feel the ground without having to go barefoot everywhere. Plus they don't look horrendous like the five finger Vibrams. <laughs> so these are really sick looking. Um, they're, they were worth the wait uh, as far as like them coming in and how they look and how they fit and feel. Uh, I still haven't worked out the, in them yet. Would have been really useful at the Revive Gym. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. So um, the last thing that I will say is that, um, so with a lot of people not understanding the low carb, uh, moderate fat or high fat, and then your protein's kind of gonna be the same, whether it be low carb or high carb day, low fat or high fat day, or moderate fat day or moderate carb day. So this carb cycling thing, right? You don't typically change your protein. You usually keep that the same. Uh, one gram per pound of body weight is what I like to go with. If you hit it, that's great. If you don't, you're still higher than what you probably were eating. Uh, but the biggest question or the most asked question 
regarding diets or meals or how do I hit my macros my my um, for whatever plan I'm on it's usually the fat so carbs typically we can fill that up no problem you have your potatoes your rice um, you have your fruits uh, you have legumes if you really want them I I say try to steer away from that um, with a lot of the phytic acid but uh, breads anything like that for the carbohydrates okay um, pastas the meat or the protein on the other hand that's pretty easy as well you get your meat based you have your dairy based uh, yeah, and you, you have your protein powders so that would be the route that I go with that and also we got your eggs so the fat content though this is where we kind of deter so the fats for sure I'll show you what I'm talking about you would usually get them from let's say like your natural source fats right so your eggs okay so each egg is typically going to have five grams of fat from the yolk it's going to be awesome because it's going to have a lot of uh, choline in that and that can help with cognitive function it can help with protein metabolism carbohydrate metabolism cellular function energy um, help with uh, the serine levels so that you may mitigate some other risk of neuropathy from diabetes okay so we got that one for a source of fat the other source of fat, um, avocado. Okay, avocado, it may or may not work for you. It really depends it, on your histamine response to it. So sometimes this can inhibit some DAO enzymes, which can help to reduce uh, histamine. But avocado, great source of potassium, way better source of potassium than a banana, way better. Um, but you get more fats in here as well the monosaturated fats and also um, it, the fiber in here as well okay so it will help satisfy you even longer on those low carb days or no carb days where your fats a little bit higher um, also it can reduce the risk of you back kind of having some irregularity because of meats and such but um, the avocado for sure if you don't have a histamine response now how do you know if you have a histamine response well typically you have some sort of bloating or gut distension sometimes you can have an irritation of the small rash around like your belly but um it's maybe some inflammation within the face the sinuses uh your eyes things like that might be a cause of it but typically bloating is going to be the issue at the gut distension that i would stay away from from avocado Another option that we're going to use is going to be the Kerrygold butter, right? So you can add this on top of your meats or vegetables, whatever that you use. Um, and that's going to be a great source uh, for uh, your fats as well as the butter can help with emulsifying some of those um, the, uh, the vegetables. And so like whenever you cook with some butter at higher temperatures, whether it be butter or something else with a high smoking point, it can help extract some of those uh, micronutrients uh, from some, certain vegetables or even nightshades. So like tomatoes, if you like tomatoes and you don't have a poor response to nightshades, uh, such as tomatoes, eggplant, um, then go ahead with that. The other option that we have was going to be um, coconut oil or macadamia nut oil. So I'm out of macadamia nut oil right now, but coconut oil right here. You can add that on to your foods, make dressings out of it, cook with it, whatever you need to do. Um, but that's going to be the route to go for the fat. That's pretty much what I stick with whenever, um, putting that into people's diets. The other thing is we can't forget it's going to be fat from the animal source protein. So if we have um, our choice of beef or chicken, obviously we'll go with some chicken thighs. It's going to have a little bit more fat in there. You can do it with the skin if you're really going to need that fat, um, which that's a good thing to have texturally as well. So if you wanted to put it into an air fryer or crisp it up somehow, awesome. The other fats from beef, again, grass-fed, grass-finished is typically 
what I would go for on those fatty cuts of meat. If it's not a fatty cut of meat, you really don't need to go for the grass fed, grass finished. You can go with the grass fed, right? If you really want to. But the majority of um, xenoestrogens and hormones and such, they do get stored in the fat cells. And so the leaner the cow, the leaner the piece of the meat, the most like unlikely you're going to have any type of like poor negative response to it okay because you can't eliminate all these types of xenoestrogens but you can try to moderate them and and mitigate some of the of the uh, um the the excessive amount that you get so keep that in mind so again like a ribeye is going to be great the new york strip it's going to have that fat on there again if you don't like the texture of fat I highly recommend if you have an air fryer, air fry the fat. It gets it nice and crispy. Same idea with the bacon, right? Um, nice and crispy. You can just like crumble it up on top of whatever you're eating. Even on top of your veggies, it actually makes it a lot better. So like air fried broccoli with um, like a tablespoon of butter and then some bake, like the uh, fat from your um, ribeye, right? So that's really, really good. Um, that's going to be my my suggestions when it comes to dieting and you're looking for fat sources, that's going to be healthy. But again, keep in mind, fats are using a lot of things to help with not sticking to containers if it's processed food or helping with the cooking process or emulsifying process. So, or flavoring. So, because it, it does bring an extra type of, of, of flavor uh, note on foods, <clears throat> dressings, things like that. So it does sneak in. So fat will always sneak into your diet, which is a main cause of type two diabetes is having that high processed, highly palatable foods that are carbohydrates, but they do have a good amount of fat that's in those carbs as well. If it was just carbs by itself and you were eating protein and carbs and your fat was low and you were staying active, we wouldn't have this problem. But the fact is that we have a lot of these other, um, uh, macronutrients that shouldn't be at a very high level throughout the entire day with low activity. So it's a lot of different variables that cause this, but one way that we can mitigate some of the risk of type two diabetes outside of staying active. So within our diet realm of what we eat, our meal plans, carb cycling is going to be the best um, approach for that. And I'm, and I can say that almost confidently that, you know, the best um and there's not a lot of best out there but the reason why i think it's the best is because adherence and consistency is the best way to progress in any diet or lifestyle or anything that you do right adherence and consistency through the highs and lows but the carb cycling allows you to be able to eat foods outside of what you usually could or could not eat now again it's not gonna be the best diet for you if you have an autoimmune disease, that's totally different. I'm just talking about overall wanting to reduce the risk of type two diabetes. You're a standard American and you've been eating the standard American diet. This is the route that I would go because it's not going to take away anything from you or restrict you because you're gonna have it on one of those other days if you really want it, whether it be a high carb day or, or a low fat day or moderate carb, moderate fat. So you can play around with it however many days that you need to do low carb in a row and a high carb like one day and then low carb and then moderate and then low carb, low carb, low carb, moderate, low carb, high carb. So, I mean, it's tons of ways to play with it. It's so versatile. So that's that would be my approach and my recommendation. And that's really what I find helps people avoid cravings, avoid binging avoid a lot of these pitfalls that we see in, in the yo-yo dieting to where you don't want to become another statistic. You don't want to be a person that's like, hey, I used to uh, weigh 190, but now, you know, life and stress and kids, now I weigh 280. Well, that's an excuse, right? You're just trying to you know, make up for your poor lifestyle and, um, and habit choice. So those are your, the poor choices that you're making. Um, so I guess I'll leave it there. Uh, I should have recorded more at Revive, but it was just one of those atmospheres um, that was just really good to be around. Uh, I'll go down there again. It's not too far of a drive, like I said before in the beginning of this video. 
and I'll get more footage, hopefully of like myself actually working out so you guys can see. Um, and we'll go up to like three, probably, you know, make our way back to that pendulum squat, go up to three, four plates and um, yeah, man, let's see what happens. Thank you for watching if you made it this far and hit the like button that'd be great and subscribe and share and uh you got all my links for er everything that i'm with and offer in my link tree so it's link tree forward slash fit dot dad so thank you